This is the first in a series of videos used to demonstrate a relatively new software application, our, our material model calibration app in the 3D Experience platform. So the tool is available in the 3D Experience platform and the intent of this software application or software app or simply app is to take uh, test data from a material, a, a small specimen, like a dog bone specimen of material, to test it. And for use in Abacus, one will want to create a math model or material model. And oftentimes those math models are uh, some equational form with parameters, and we want to determine the correct parameters. So we're, we've opened the 3D Experience platform, and I'm just going to show you that the release that I'm using here to do this demonstration is the 3D Experience platform release R2021X Hotfix 2.2. This is the current customer cloud, or, or we also say the customer cloud in production. And by current, I should tell you that I'm recording this video on October 1st of 2020. So this is the current software that a, that a customer using the cloud would have available to them. So we would go to the V plus R quadrant. All the software uh, apps for Simulia are in this quadrant. And I have a whole series of, of software applications available to me, and I've moved just a few of them into my favorites. And the Material Calibration app looks like a small test frame like you'd see in the lab and in a diagram of stress and strain because we're in the test lab we're recording things like time and stress and strain on small specimens. So I would click on that icon. And now we're, we're in the app, and you can tell that because it says Simulia Material Calibration. And again, the, uh, the major focus of the app uh, for all users of the app is the idea that you're going to import some test data, and you're going to select a material model of interest, and then you're going to calibrate that material model, and you're going to calibrate that material model with... Uh, or using some optimization framework. And as a, as a first video here, uh, this video is intended to give a quick, uh, a fairly quick overview. We're going to keep the material model simple. We're going to show some rubber material uh, test data, and we're going to fit a hyperelastic um, math model to it. And we're not going to dive deeply into things like the optimization uh, backbone or framework of this tool. Um, again, this tool is generated to try to help both the abacus expert and um, the more part-time or novice user uh, of abacus. So all of these icons are pretty much used from left to right. And the, many of the same icons are shown down here in the action bar. So the very first thing we'll do is read in some information from test data. I'm going to go out to my hard drive, and I'm going to click on this particular file. And in this, um, we're, we're able to, to read from Excel, read from CSV files, and read from ASCII text files. And um, this particular data comes from a, a fairly famous professor named Trelor. Professor Trelor did a lot of research on rubber back in the 1940s and published many papers and a, and a classic book on rubber. Um, that test data is included in the Abacus documentation benchmark 3.1.4, and, and that's where this part of the file name comes from. So we'll just open that file. And one thing we tried to do in this app is make the data import very generic. We don't want you to have to create additional files structured in a way to uh, allow us to read in. We want to read in any particular files that you might have available. Um, the, the tool does support the use of both time and frequency domain test data, and we'll say more about that in later follow-on videos. Um, Anytime you're reading in test data, especially for elastomers or rubbers, um, people will talk about 
what deformation mode or mode of deformation the data comes from. And we'll um, talk just briefly about that as we import this data. You can accept the uh, default name, uniaxial, or I often abbreviate that just as simple tension, ST. And a few comments about importing the test data. We've tried to make it very simple, so I can just highlight the two columns like this. And this on this tab of the data in Excel, I have some simple tension data, so that's why this mode of deformation is set to uniaxial. And we can say Next. And on the Next tab, we show you a little preview of the data so that you might recognize whether you've opened the correct file or not. Um, the 3D Experience platform is a units aware tool, and I have chosen to work in millimeters Newton megapascal. So, um, however, this particular data, as published in Benchmark 3.1.4, is not in megapascals. It's the first column is in is strain is nominal strain. You can set the column heading. If this had happened to be time, we could have done something like that, but it's in fact. Um, nominal uniaxial strain, but it is not in megapascals. It's um, you. We would come down here and say it is nominal uniaxial stress, and we would pick the particular units. And the units that Trelor used are these um, kilogram force per centimeter squared right here. So we would choose that one. It would show us the units in parentheses. We could say next, and on this tab. Um, we have a general notes area, and we will we will include some information here, like the date of import and the file that it came from. And we would like to have time associated with any test data. So when there is not a column of time, we will uh, we will recreate or reconstitute the time using one of three methods. The user can choose to use a strain rate, a total time, or a time interval between points. And I'll simply accept the default value of the strain rate. And at this point, I could, if I click Finish, what that means is go ahead and import the selected test data and close out my Excel file. Import, on the other hand, means go ahead and import the selected test data, but keep the Excel file open for further use. So I'm going to say import. We automatically uh, create a plot with the data in it. And you'll notice that I'm plotting it in megapascals. So the tool has already converted it for my use. We're going to go back to the Excel file, go move to the tab called EB, highlight that data, choose the biaxial or equal biaxial deformation mode. And I'm just going to call this um, EB for equal biaxial, or I could call it BT for biaxial tension. Um, those are just my choices. And if we say next, and these things are remembered. These column headings are remembered. And that's really nice, because if you're doing a lot of work with the same type of test data, it'll save a lot of, of, of clicks. And at this point, um, the, the, the things on the next page are remembered as well. So we can just say import. And it throws that that data on the same graph. And we can go back to our um, Excel tool here. We can tell it that the next piece of data is planar. The mode of deformation is planar. We'll select these two columns, make a, even a simpler name for planar tension, and say Finish. So there's all of our data that we've imported into the tool. And you can also see it in the spec tree. There is, uh, by now, with this particular release, um, quite a few handy test data cleanup tools that one could do. And one can get at those tools by either double clicking here in the spec tree or double left clicking down here under the, under the test data sets. And we could pull up a, a set of tools that we could use to decimate the test data, to perform some zero shifting, and to smooth the test data. We could also do things like simply remove test points. Um, but I'm, this data is pretty clean, and I'm not going to, to, to focus on that in this video. So the, 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 the next kind of action that one would think about is selecting the material model. And I'm going to select it like this. 
the um, the history of this tool is when it was first released in the fall of 2018, we had only something called the analytical mode and only these material models supported. And we have since 2018 added what we call the numerical mode. And you'd get to the numerical mode of calibration by clicking on this icon, which is also the same as this icon. And if I change to numerical mode, which is shows a few bars here, the number of material models is greatly increased. Um, and we would use um, Abacus Standard. We would call Abacus Standard to get the stress response for these material models. So if your material model of choice exists within the analytical mode, and it does for this hyper, this simple hyperelastic example, um, you should you should use the analytical mode because it's 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 really fast. It's uh, almost instantaneous. So we'll select that we're going to use hyperelasticity here and say, and we can put our own title here, and we could just say this is, you know, we're using Trelar. Um, we can name it anything we want. Say OK, and then all of the hyperelastic energy potentials that are available in Abacus are available in this calibration tool. And it defaults to NeoHookian just because that's the simplest form. And I am I can always, so the solid lines are the math model responses, and the dotted lines are test data. And you can see that our default value of 0.5 for the C10 NeoHookian parameter makes for a, a, a fairly good fit in the first couple of data points, but then too stiff through the rest of the range. So now this icon, we've, we've used the import test data, we've used the select your material model, and now we're simply going to execute a calibration. And when we execute the calibration, like I said, it's almost instantaneous. This is the... Um, the history of the error norm, and that's getting a little bit um, sort of uh, optimization speak, if you will. Uh, the elapsed calibration time to, to, to three decimal places was zero, so it took, took uh, relatively little time. And this is pretty much the best that one can do um, to capture this test data with a very simple Neohookian material model. The next thing I might do is just progress to something like a Yo model. Um, Again, this isn't a training class. This is a training video. We, we do offer several classes specifically to understanding um, elastomers and their quasi-static and their uh, viscoelastic behavior. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you could, you could sign up for those kinds of classes. And again, so this is a YO model, and we could just say calibrate. That calibrates the YO model. The YO model can can capture the, what what is often called the upturn in the data, but we're working at very large strains. So these are at 300, 400, 500, 600 percent strain. Um, another common material model, especially when one has done all the testing and has all these modes of deformation, uh, another great material model that many people would turn to um, is an N equal 3 Ogden model. So there are uh, three pairs of mu's and alphas, six total material model parameters, and we can could just say calibrate, and we get a very good fit. Um, most of the time in material model calibration, you're not expecting, uh, or you should not expect necessarily a line-on-line -line match of the math model to the test data, but we get about that here. And we can see how good the fit is in looking at the um, R squared. We're using an R squared error norm. Um, I'm just about done with this uh, video. The last thing I would do is say that w the intent in this video was not really to get into anything regarding the optimization controls, but I would just bring that, um, I would bring that uh, dialog box up and to quickly show you uh, that dialog box. And we'll refer more to some of this in the in future videos. Thank you.